Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video. Yesterday I made a star themed card in response to a poll that I put up in my Facebook group. Stars was the winning die that people wanted me to use to make a card but a very close second was hexagons. So today I'm going to make a hexagon based card for you. This is the card I put together last night. I'm going to show you how I made it and then if you stick around toward the end of the video I'm going to share a few adaptation ideas so that you can create something like this with different things that you might have in your stash. The first thing we're going to do is make our hexagons. So I've got some mixed media paper here. This is Dana Rowney mixed media. It's one of my favourites because it's great for stamping on, great for using wet media on and it's a nice white so it looks good on a white card base but you use whatever you have in your stash or whatever your preference is I've got some mixed media stamps here they're just splats and splotches these were a cheap set from Amazon and as usual I'm going to dust my paper with corn flour it doesn't really matter if I get excess bits of uh, embossing powder stuck because it's a kind of messy mixed media look but I like to do it anyway it's a good habit to get into I think. I'm going to ink up my stamps with embossing ink give them a really good coating and then press them down. These are silicon stamps so they can withstand a a good bit of pressing. Photopolymer stamps can squish a bit if you press them too hard but as I say these are okay for a good firm press. Now I'm going to dip it in my gold embossing powder. Oops, This is rather a large bit of card for this particular tub but it's okay. Try not to get it all over the place. colour my paper I've got some lovely warm yellowy orange colours these are Catherine Pooler inks from the Spa collection I've got shea butter apricot and clay mask and the reason I've chosen these warm colours is that hexagons remind me of honeycomb and that's the colour of honeycomb so I'm going to start by just blending some yellow all the way down yellow will be the base colour doesn't matter if it's blotchy. I want some on here as well because I'm going to cut from some ungolded bits. And now I'm going to go in with the apricot which is the middle colour. I think I will just splodge it around, mix it about. I do want a bit of each colour on each stamp pattern. So clay mask is the most orange of the three colours, so I just want a little bit of that here and there. The reason I chose dye inks for this is because they haven't got any pigment in them and that just makes buffing off the embossing a little bit easier. With say Distress Oxides they've got pigment in them so that will sit on top of the embossing and sink down into all the little valleys and that gives a slightly different look and makes it a bit harder to buff off and that's fine, that's a, that's a look, that's a good look which I use from time to time but today I wanted just to make it as easy as possible for myself just to buff off ink from the gold so that the gold can really stand out. Now I'm going to remove this bit here for later and just cut these up so that they fit through my mini Gemini and I've got a selection, well two sets of nesting hexagon dies. One set 
has three in and stitched edge and the other set has five in but no stitching and I'm going to mix and match them it really doesn't matter in fact it just adds that little bit of extra interest and all I'm going to do is arrange my hexagons on my bits here and run them through my mini Gemini to get some hexagons and I'm going to end up cutting far more than I need but they'll go in my little pot of die cuts that I can just grab when I need to make a quick card or if I have another idea for this particular design. So there we have some lovely warm coloured gold embossed hexagons. The next step is to cut this hexagon net out of hammered white cardstock and stick it on my hammered white cardstock card blank. This is four and a half inches high by six and a half wide and I chose that size because the net looks particularly good on it. And while I'm here I'm just going to run a bit of this yellow through with the net to get some yellow tiny little hexagons and I'll add those to my pile of hexagons over here and while I've got this little bit of yellow here I'm going to cut my sentiment from it. This is the word sweet in a scripty font so my sentiment is going to be sweet. You could always add to it and put sweet as honey or you're as sweet as honey or you're so sweet. And to help that stand out, I'm going to cut the shadow as well out of hammered white cardstock. Before I start assembling though, I'm going to add some foam tape to the back of these hexagons. Just the ones I cut out, not the teeny tiny ones. So I think we're ready to go now. I'm going to put a nice big load of glue on my mat, spread it out with my glue spreader, nice and thin. And we'll start by sticking down the hexagon net. Pop that in there, tamp it down. And add it over here just in the bottom half off to the left and I do want it to look straight on there so let me see yeah that looks good and to press it down I'll pop a bit of deli paper over just to protect it from my mucky fingers lift that up there's a couple of splodges of glue which I can just gently dab up with a damp baby wipe so that's down nicely if you didn't want to do that particular method you could always put some double-sided sticky on the back before you die cut it out this way though you get a little bit of wiggle room so the next stage is to add some of my hexagons so I'm going to start with a big one here get it lined up nicely and then this one here I'm putting them with the point running up and down the page because the points of these hexagons are running up and down the page rather than across the page but depending on what you're putting in the background you might want to run them in the other direction or if you're doing a portrait card you might want to do it differently so i've got three largish ones there I do want to try and include all of the different stamping designs. Now with these little ones here, the ones that I ink blended and then cut with the net, I just want to inlay them in a few places just for a bit of variation in height.
this one, which is the smallest of the individual hexagons that I cut, I'm not going to put on craft foam. Again, just for a little bit of variation in height. So I've got a different arrangement there, a bigger one here. I, uh, I like that, so we'll stick with that. Now to add my sentiment. So I just dip that in there. And pop that on the shadow in the right place. Get my deli paper again, just press it down. And then that can go in there. And it could sit on there like that. And there's a finishing touch for this card. I've got some mini enamel dots here. This is the bright sheet. So these are quite bright yellow, which works nicely. Just dot those around. And I've also got the pastel sheet with a pastel yellow which again I think works well. We can mix and match. Could add some gold Nouveau drops instead of enamel dots. That would be another option. So those are the two cards. I'm really pleased with how they've both turned out. Now I'll give you some ideas of ways to adapt them. One thing you could do is add a bit of gloss to your sentiment to help it stand out amongst all that shimmery gold. If you're steady handed, you could use glossy accents. If you're not so steady handed or if you just want to do something really quick that is instantly dry, take some packing tape, clear packing tape, pop it on your coloured bit of paper and then run that. Let me just poke those bits out there through your die cutting machine and there you have a shiny sentiment. An alternative to adding the net onto the background is to use your dies to emboss the pattern. So you pop your die on your card, cutting side down, and then you follow your die cutting machine's instructions on how to emboss with dies. So with my cuttle bug, it is the thick plate, one of the cutting plates, the rubber mat, and then you pop your card and your die with the cutting side down another cutting plate, run that through your die cutting machine, and this is what you get. You get the hexagon patterns embossed on the background rather than having the net embossed. So that might be something you want to do. This is another hexagon type die. It's an aperture die. So this is a net die where you get the net. This is an aperture die where it cuts the hexagons out of the panel. And I just did exactly the same thing. I embossed with this die in the same way using my cuttle bag and I've got a lovely hexagon shape there. So whatever you've got, whether that's a net die or an aperture die, you can still emboss on the background like that. I've also used this aperture die to create a stencil. So this is a bit of thin plastic. This is actually mylar, which is what they make stencils out of, but it is a thinner one because that's easier to run through your die cutting machine than the thick mylar. So I've cut the aperture using that and now I could use that as a stencil. So instead of embossing or die cutting or adding a net behind your hexagons, you could add a blush of colour rather than having just white. So you could pop your hexagons on top of something like that would look quite nice. You could use this to cut the net and then use the net as a stencil. That would work as well. If you haven't got any hexagon dies that you can use for a background, you could use a hexagon stencil to emboss. So this is a small stencil, but you could use a larger one and just have it hanging off the edge. So when I want to emboss with a stencil, with my cutter bug, I have my thick plate, one, two, three bits of card to act as shims to thicken up the sandwich, the clear cutting plate, the rubber mat, the card I want to emboss, the stencil 
I want to emboss with and then the top cutting plate and then I run that through the machine. So here we have our embossing with a hexagon stencil. So with this particular stencil, because it's narrow, I do get a line at the edge of the stencil. So you could try and just minimise that by pressing down on it with your fingernail, just flat it out a bit. You could use a bone folder to do that, or you could make it a feature, you could leave it as it is. Or if you wanted, you could cut a panel out and stick that on. So now I've got a nice bit of embossed card that you could then stick on your card. Of course you can use an embossing folder as well to create that background texture. I haven't got any hexagon embossing folders but I do have this trail, this dotty trail, which reminds me of the flight of a bee, a honeybee. So I could emboss over the whole background if I wanted or I could just emboss over part of the background. So I could just do, say, the bottom half of the card by just putting that in there. You might get a bit of a line here, but it depends on your embossing folder and how thick your sandwich is. You just have to experiment with your particular die cutting machine. And this is what I get. This bit of the card has no embossing on it, but this bit is embossed, so obviously Again, if you wanted to just leave it like that, you could, or you could cut a thinner panel out and stick that on your card. I have had in the past some embossing folders that are thin, that make just a kind of border. So if you've got one like that, that's a hexagon shape or something that works with the theme, then go for that. Right, I think that's it. That's these two cards made and a few ideas on how to adapt the design. I hope you've enjoyed the video and that you found it helpful. If you have, please do leave a thumbs up, let me know in the comments, subscribe, ring that notification bell, all of those things. And I will see you back here very soon for my next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.